Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. Now in this one I will be updating my little pond area just to make it a little bit more wildlife friendly. I'll be adding in some more plants and just changing the layout slightly. I will also be planting out my sweet peas on the archway and I'll be showing you how beautiful the tulips look. They've all come out in bloom and they look absolutely stunning. So I think it's time to plant these sweet peas out because they're getting a little bit <laughs> too big now. I actually sowed these on the 24th of February and they germinated on the 13th of March. Um, what I've done is I pinched them out so that they could bulk out a little bit. So for instance, this plant here has three stems on it, which is great, which will hopefully mean more flowers. They are getting a little bit tangled now, uh, which is one of the reasons why I've decided to uh, plant them out. I mean, look at that one. <laughs> it's quite tall now. Um, so they're going to go out today. So I have been looking through my granddad's old gardening book again. And there's a really, really big section on sweet peas. Now they say you can plant them out in early April. I did think it was a little bit too early. Um, but um, I'm going to risk it anyway, just because they're getting so big. <laughs> and I'm running out of room now in the cold frame at home. Uh, so they're going to go out. Now they need to be planted 8 to 12 inches apart and they're actually going to go on my archway again like last year. So um, there's going to be one sweet pea plant per hazel. So they are, about, they are about 8 inches apart which is fine. So that's absolutely perfect. And it also says here that um, when planting them you can add a little bit of leaf mould or some bone meal. Uh, into each hole where you plant the sweet pea. So I've got some bone meal. I found it found it in the shed, so I thought I'll try that um, and see how it goes. Now I planted these sweet peas into these root trainers, which I used last year uh, for the for the French beans, I think, and they were amazing. What? they are let's see if I can get one out without completely ruining these sweet peas see they are completely tangled which is why they need to really really go out and we've been having such nice weather as well it's been so sunny but today it's a little bit windy as you can tell <laughs> so I've got one out so they come in these four sections here and I'll try and open it just to show you. See the roots go right down to the bottom because they're nice and deep. They're perfect for sweet peas because they have these really long roots. Uh, so yeah, they're root trainers. And I've had these for a year now and you can obviously reuse them. They're perfect and they're great for beans and sweet peas. And just basically anything with really long roots. So let's plant them out.
said in my last video that I was going to change the pond area um, and I'm still going to do that and I was actually just removing the water forget me not because I need to put it on but I literally just took it out of the pond and about five frogs jumped out so they must have been hiding underneath it and there's loads there's absolutely loads so I am chuffed to pieces I really really thought I'd scared them away and um, I actually noticed one uh, last week um, in the forget-me-not leaves and I thought oh I've got one frog but now there's there's about five of them and they're all quite big I'm really really happy <laughs> really happy that they're there which makes it even more of a priority to get this area finished um, now I watched Gardener's World um, a couple of weeks back and Monty Don was putting in a wildlife pond um, in an area of Long Meadow um, and it was a really good episode so if you are looking at putting a pond in then I'll check it out because it was really really interesting um, anyway there's a few things which I think I would have done differently um, if if I'd seen that <laughs> before putting this pond in because there's nothing wrong with this pond it's 60 centimetres deep at the deepest point um, there's two shells one here and then one the other side and then there's a slight ramp there um, but what I think I would have done differently is I would have made it 60 centimetres deep but maybe just a smaller area because the deep part is actually really really quite big in the middle um, so I probably would have done it 60 centimetres but at a smallest area and then maybe done a massive shelf around the whole back bit I just to put plants on just for the frogs um, it would have given me a bigger surface area because the two shells which I've got are only I mean they're only about four inches deep um, so they're not really really big enough um, so <laughs> that's what I would have done differently but I mean there's nothing wrong with this now and, and hopefully I'm going to change it a little bit now because what I've done is I found some more rockery stones well they're actually really massive rocks <laughs> at home uh, they weren't needed so I thought I'd bring them up here and put them just to good use so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some into the pond that way it will create some nice hiding places for the frogs and it will also create more areas where I can put plants onto because it will obviously um, keep them up a bit uh, so that's the plans with the rocks I'm also going to put some around the back edge and create maybe maybe two layers of rocks there for the wildlife and for the frogs so because obviously they can hide in there because there'll be lots of nooks and crannies and I might put some nice little alpine flowers on there as well to make it look a little bit prettier um, and I also went to a local pond shop called World of Water in Romsey it's a really great shop it's amazing they've got a website as well so so if you're looking for any pond plants check them out because they are really good um, anyway the bit spoiled for choice but I did come home with some um, Caltha palustris it's a marsh marigold um, otherwise known as a king cup and it's got beautiful yellow flowers now they flower in March and April um, and I thought the yellow would look really really nice with my blue water forget-me-not and the other thing I got is a water iris called blue flag now I did really want the yellow one but uh, I thought I've already got yellow flower here it's been a bit fussy but I thought I'd get different coloured flowers just to make it look a little bit nicer I uh, said so this one is called blue flag but it's it's like a mauve with white so I thought that would look nice um, so yeah I've got the marsh marigold I've got the iris and I've got the water forget me not which I got last year now that desperately needs potting on so I bought the new pot for it and I've also bought some aquatic soil so I'm going to pop that on. <laughs> There's a little frog staring right at me. <laughs> He's probably like, what are you talking about? Um, but yeah, the, the water forget me not needs potting on really, really bad. Look, all the roots are coming out, which is what the frogs are really like, I think. There's actually some buds appearing on there. So I'm going to do that today. I'm going to pop that on. I'm going to put some rocks into the pond. Um, hopefully without squishing any frogs no no I try and be really careful um, and then I'm going to put these plants in I might put the iris and the the marsh marigold 
uh, towards the back because obviously the iris will grow to about 60 to 90 centimeters above the water so that would be nice up there and then the water forget-me-not I might put here because that's really really pretty I do love forget-me-not and there's absolutely loads of it around the allotments right now it spreads like crazy but if you keep it under control then it's perfectly fine um, so that's the plan for the pond what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get rid of these little pebbles which I put around because quite a few of them have managed to slide into the pond and I've lost quite a lot and it's just it's a little bit annoying so I brought some of the the bigger rocks up just to make it look a little bit nicer and then hopefully the frogs will like it oh and I actually bought this this fake water lily <laughs> it's really really kitsch but um i really like it i did have my eye on a real water lily um they had loads at the world of water shop um but and i found one which would have been perfect for this pond it was a it was like a pygmy one uh, and it only grew to to 30 to 40 centimeters spread and it had beautiful pink flowers quite similar to that actually um, yeah and it was a dwarf one and I thought oh that would look really really nice in my pond but um, I, d I didn't buy it I might go back for it yet <laughs> we'll, we'll see how the other flowers grow because obviously I don't want to crowd it all um, and that's it that is my job for this evening and I'm going to try and do it now because now that I know I've got frogs I just want to make them happy because they have definitely made me happy I'm so chuffed that they're here. And <laughs> he's still staring at me. Hello little foggy. They are amazing. And I'm hoping that they will they will help me with the slug problem this year because some slugs have been trying to eat my broad beans and I'm not happy about that. So you need to help me, frogs. Keep those slugs down. <laughs> right, I better get on. So that's the pond all sorted out. I'm really glad that I got to do that now. And now that I know that there's frogs living in there, I'm just so, so happy that I found them. Um, but that's all sorted. 
and it's looking a lot better. I'm glad that I put the rocks around the outside because that looks so much better. Um, but that is it for this episode. <laughs> but I couldn't leave without showing you the tulip trough, which I'm just so happy with. I'm so glad that I decided to put the tulips in here because I originally thought it was possibly a little bit of a waste <laughs> because obviously allotments are for growing things um, and I had tomatoes in this trough last year but they got blight and I didn't get any tomatoes from there um, but I'm really really glad that I put the tulips in <laughs> they look so beautiful I'm so happy with them and obviously once they've finished I can put something else in here I said it's fine but I don't think it's a waste now I think it's the best thing that I've grown um, it probably maybe nearly beats the munchkin pumpkins I grew last year but I just love them I love the colours and my favourite is this double bloom now all of these are from Sarah Raven um, and I actually wrote down which ones I planted where in my little journal so I bought a mix called Brandy Snap now that's the first five rows up to here and then these pink ones are called Apricot Beauty and then these ones which haven't come out yet they are called Grown Land then there's two rows of Mistress Grey and two rows of Spring Green and then there's also some garlic in the end <laughs> um, but no I'm really 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 happy with them the colours are just beautiful especially this Brandy Snap mix I just love the colours and now on my blog I've written a bit about tulips and I've um, noted down which varieties each one in the brandy snap mix are because these ones in particular are my favourite they are just so beautiful they don't even look like tulips they remind me of like peonies and these orange ones here they smell so nice mm. <laughs> so yeah the tulip drop is a success um, and I totally recommend Sarah Raven I mean just look at these colours they are absolutely beautiful <laughs> so that's it for this episode it was quite a short one uh, there's not really a lot to be done on the allotment everything's sort of up to scratch the only things that really need doing um, are big jobs like netting the fruit cage um, and building the chicken run <laughs> now you probably thought that I've forgotten about chickens <laughs> but I haven't I've just just been having a real good think about getting chickens um, and I'm still sort of sitting on the fence and I know that I was really excited about getting chickens before and I was really all for it but, um, but I'm having a really good think about <laughs> getting chickens I do really really want them um, but I'm just a little bit worried about them being up the allotment um, and the foxes of course but uh, I can't have them at home so they're really there's really only space for them up here uh, so I am having a really good think about the chickens but um, I'll probably go more into that in the next episode um, just explaining why <laughs> and all that um, yeah but that's it for this episode everything's growing really well I'll probably do an update of the plot and of my dad's plot as well very soon because loads of things are growing and the growing season has officially started everything's starting to look green and lush and pretty <laughs> and that's it for this episode so thank you for watching and i will see you all next time <laughs>